This audio podcast is brought to you by WCWF. The future is bright. The future is WCWF. We thank them for supporting that snazzy iPhone guy and check out their sites at youtube.com slash WCWF videos and www.wcwfederation.webs.com. We thank them for their support of that snazzy iPhone guy. Hey guys, this is yet another installment of the That Snazzy iPhone Guy podcast. We thank you all for coming out tonight to listen to the show. Today we have a very special interviewee, Aubrey Falconer, the developer of Mars Explorer for iPhone and iPod Touch. Aubrey also does many other works, such as Safari, the best way to sell and buy online. Check out all of Aubrey's work at aubreyfalconer.com. Thank you, Aubrey, for joining the show, and thank you for listening. Before we start this interview, I'd like to apologize for the poor quality. We did this over telephone because Aubrey had a high latency satellite internet connection and not a fast DSL one to support an audio chat over the air. So this is done through a pair of iPhones, which means the quality isn't that great, but the content is still good. So we apologize for that, and uh, it will be fixed in the future. Thanks. Hey, guys. This is That's Nazi iPhone Guy, and we have a very special interview with Aubrey Falconer, the developer of Mars Explorer. How are you today, Aubrey? Great. Thanks for inviting me on the show. No problem. Alrighty, so uh, we'll just jump right into this. Uh, so you're the developer of Mars Explorer. In what language did you write this game, and how many lines of code is it? Uh, Mars Explorer is written entirely in JavaScript, which is very unusual for an iPhone application. But I'm using a framework called Unity 3D, which is powered by Mono, which allows me to statically compile JavaScript into ARM assembler code during the build process. And I really like it. It's a super easy language, and with a background in web application development, I was very familiar with it. Um, There's only around 1,700 lines of code in the latest version of Mars Explorer. Of course, I wrote several times that number during the course of development, but major optimizations in the last release and the sheer number of components Mars Explorer utilizes that are built into Unity have kept the line count down to a very moderate level. I'm sure my programming style has a lot to do with that number as well. (laughs) How long did it take to develop? Well, I discovered Unity 3D a little over a year ago, and the idea of becoming a 3D programmer fascinated me so much that I decided to dedicate to the many hours needed to teach it to myself. I began work on the desktop version of Mars Explorer just to learn by doing something. Around four months ago, Unity released their iPhone development system, which I purchased the day it came out, and I began writing a new game based on the desktop Mars Explorer code base, but optimized in every respect to get maximum performance out of devices like the iPhone. I released Mars Explorer for iPhone 1.0 on the App Store around two months after starting work on it, and I'm still actively working on updates as I have time. I've spent innumerable hours learning Unity and developing Mars Explorer over the last year, But I feel it was time well spent, and now with what I have learned, I'm pretty confident I could write the iPhone version again in about a month. How many copies have you sold, if you don't mind me asking? (laughs) Well, so far I can count the number of thousands of copies I've sold on my fingers without using my toes. But I've got many new features in development, which I'm confident will translate to an even more amazing game, and hopefully with even more amazing sales numbers. Well, 1.1 certainly was a big update. That was amazing. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, One thing I find amazing is that you're only 18 years of age. Was this a factor? Uh, Did this help your developmental background? And what is your developmental background? Well, I would say the main factor that influenced my decision to become a programmer was being homeschooled. It's allowed me to spend much more time than the average grade schooler would be able to on subjects that interested me. And around seven or so, I decided that I was interested in computer programming and started writing some really simple games for the Apple IIgs. I switched to web development around age 10 because I could get a much larger audience than writing games that no one would ever see. And so I started work on a couple of projects, and then about a year ago I found Unity 3D, so I switched back into games a lot. But I'm really grateful to have been homeschooled. I think my parents did a very good decision in that, and it's definitely been a major influence in writing Mars Explorer. Oh, and that's a phenomenal application. Then to say you're 18 years old, that just adds to it. That's phenomenal. <laughs> it's fun. I get a lot of comments on that. <laughs> very cool. 
Uh, how was working with Apple? Was the submission into the App Store smooth, or did you hit some bumps along the road? Yeah, so far, all my submissions have gone smoothly. Um, it's taken between three days and a week on average for Apple to approve each new version of the release. I'd really appreciate it if Apple had a faster and more transparent review process, and I'd be really excited for them to release better tools for sales tracking, but overall, the current submission process seems to work well, and I'm sure Apple has their own ideas to make it work better that they're working on. That's probably true. How was the SDK, the software development kit? Were the tools provided useful in your development, or did you hit some bumps along the road? Well, Apple's SDK certainly is useful. But 95% of the time I spent working on Mars Explorer, I wasn't even using their SDK. I was using the tool called Unity 3D I described earlier, and it is an excellent development environment. It allows me to use nearly all the code I wrote for Mars Explorer for desktop on the iPhone version, just optimized a lot, set up everything for the iPhone, preview it on my device, and then hit build, compile it to an Xcode application, and then preview it on my device for real, all in a matter of seconds instead of hours, which you'd normally be doing. Wow. And I'd really recommend Unity to anyone interested in learning game development. Yeah, that, I was always interested with that splash screen up there um, <laughs> when you start the application. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any other further plans for the iPhone version of Mars Explorer? Any further updates you're working on? Yeah, I'm constantly adding new features to both the desktop and the iPhone versions as fast as I can code them. And although I can't give any estimated release dates, a couple of the things I'm really excited to be working on include global high scores, shadowed multiplayer, which is where you can save your own runs and then race against other save runs and see their vehicle on your screen as you're completing your mission to figure out where they cut corners and beat your time, and then more worlds and missions and possibly even more vehicles. So is this a one-man show, or are you doing all the graphics by yourself, or were there some other people involved? Yeah, my web development years involved quite a bit of graphic design, and I've always really enjoyed it. It's a fun diversion from coding, so whenever I get tired of programming, I just work on making the graphics better. So you run it all by yourself? Cool. Yep, and I have yeah. lots of other projects I run, too. Sweet. Um do you have any more plans for development in the future with iPhone, or are there any other apps you're currently in the works with? Well, I have enough updates planned for Mars Explorer to keep me pretty busy in the gaming realm for years to come, but I have many other projects besides Mars Explorer, which I'm sure will be waking their way to native iPhone applications, or at least iPhone-optimized web applications in the future. Safari.com, spelled with two R's, is my vision for revolutionizing online classifieds, I like to describe it as a Craigslist-style free classified system with a feature set, polish, and ease of use that makes even eBay look bad. I'm also developing Plexpedia.com, which is kind of like a combination between Wikipedia, Google Groups, and your favorite CMS or blogging platform. Everyone can find links to all my projects, including the desktop version of Mars Explorer, which can be played for free inside a web browser at my website, Aubrey Falconer, A-U-B-R-E-Y-F-A-L-C-O-N-E-R, Com. Great, and that was my last question. Where can we find you at, and where can we get all your updates? So, AubreyFalconer.com. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Aubrey, for joining us on the show today. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day to do this. It's really great, and we appreciate you on the show. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. All righty. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.